Welcome to Rock City Gardens, one of the greatest roadside attractions of all time located atop Lookout Mountain in Georgia. For the holiday season, Rock City is embellished as the Enchanted Garden of Lights. And I am really excited to experience this event here at one of my favorite attractions for the first time. Rock City opened back in 1932, over 90 years ago now, when property owners Garnet and Frida Carter transformed the geologic wonder atop the mountain into a walkthrough rock garden attraction. Rock City has changed and expanded a bit since then, but when the attraction first opened in 1932, visitors would enter through this gate. For the Enchanted Garden of Lights, they have reopened the original entryway, so this is really exciting to me as I've never gone through here before. This turret was the original ticket booth. Usually, Rock City is a one-way walkthrough experience. However, during the Enchanted Garden of Lights, there are numerous ways to explore, with many different pathways available that are not usually accessible to visitors. Honestly, I found it a bit confusing at first, so let's start here at the current entrance plaza, which right now is being called North Pole Village, and see where the trail leads from here. There is a space for visitors to meet Santa Claus at North Pole Village. I also noticed this Life Magazine 1960 Rock City feature with an amazing illustrated map of southern attractions. Rock City is known for its expansive population of German garden gnomes. These were originally employed by Frida Carter. Now let's set off on the enchanted flagstone trail through Rock City illuminated with over a million Christmas lights. That is a great hand-carved nativity. The first of several narrow passages along the trail is the Needle's Eye.
I noticed a tin soldier creeping behind this door. There are some new tributes to Rock City history. For example, Garnet Carter arguably invented mini golf up here on Lookout Mountain by opening Tom Thumb Mini Golf in 1927. Rock City was famously advertised on the sides and roofs of barns that could be seen from the road all across the American South. A man named Clark Byers would travel around and offer to paint a farmer's barn for free if he could promote Rock City on them. Unfortunately, the number of surviving Rock City barns is dwindling. There is a light up nativity show that runs on a loop. The trip was arduous, especially for Mary, she being with child. Suddenly, a great star blazed in the heavens, and the glory of the Lord shone all about them. They represented all the corners of the known world all the races of humankind. In this way, the rich and the powerful, the humble and the poor, joined in giving homage to this newborn Messiah. A haven from heat in the alternative of love. This section of Rock City's Winter Wonderland is called the Arctic Kingdom. There is a fire pit under Shelter Rock. There is Lover's Leap, which currently has a giant Christmas star on its side. It is supposedly possible to see seven states from Lover's Leap. Now that is a disputed claim. 
perhaps long ago without any air pollution that was possible, but there are lights in many states visible from this point tonight, which is really cool. Perhaps we can see the light pollution from seven states. I love how they convert tortoiseshell rock into a snowman. That's clever. Now we'll continue on through the traditional Rock City route, which requires going through the Fat Man Squeeze. Several changes have been made to this section of the trail in the past several years by adding some whimsical rock art. These new installations glow at night, which looks really great. Here in the Rainbow Hall, it appears they have changed the rainbow windows yet again. Now it looks like there are crystals in the windows.
Well, this is definitely new. There is now a rocky throne in the Hall of the Mountain King, which makes sense. That actually looks really cool. While I overall like these changes in here, I do really wish they would bring back the Moonshining Gnomes. I have never been down in this tunnel under the original entrance route. Let's see where this goes. It appears that the tunnel leads to the entrance of Fairyland Caverns. Fairyland Caverns is a magnificent 1940s addition to Rock City, and it is a one-of-a-kind retro fantasy experience. This project was spearheaded by Frida Carter, who loved European and specifically German fairy tales, so she created this cavern incorporating geode walls, ultraviolet scenes from fairy tales and nursery rhymes, as well as gnomes, of course. There are a few Christmas decorations added to Fairyland Caverns. In this scene, Santa is flying in his sleigh out in the distance. Frida commissioned the sculptor Jesse Sanders to create these blacklight sculptures and scenes. This was technically the first ever UV art experience. This next corridor has some great fairy tale scenes.
Here is Mother Goose Village, the magnum opus of Fairyland Caverns, which does have some special Christmas lights and ornaments added into the mix. Fairyland Caverns is a trip. I love it. The Rock City Enchanted Garden of Lights is a truly magical holiday experience. It was a completely different way to see and enjoy the historic attraction. I would absolutely recommend seeing Rock City for yourself during the holiday season. If you would like to see what Rock City is like during the rest of the year, then check out my video on that linked in the description. Additionally, I have content featuring other roadside attractions, natural wonders, historic places, Christmas attractions, and much more across the United States and Europe. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel for more. I'd really appreciate it. And seriously, Sea Rock City, thanks for watching.